Hey, another successful landing. How you doing? Uh, a buddy of mine has a lot of real estate rental property. One of them, a uh, couple people died in. He knew it was haunted. Every time he went over there to check on the power or whatever, after uh, the last tenant left, he always uh, changes the locks too. He has this lock that you can actually reprogram so you don't uh, have to uh, buy a whole new lock system. Anyway, like stuff would be moved in the place and somebody uh, ran out of the property and like a couple of weeks later, he wanted my buddy to come over and have a talk with him. And he figured he'd want his money back because he knew the place was haunted. And then he went over and uh, my buddy never lies, by the way. He's the only person I know in the world that never lies. And uh, he said, you know, the lights are uh, turning on and off in different parts of the house in the middle of the night, and he could hear stuff moving, especially one chair. It's moving in the night while you're sleeping. You get up, and the chair's moved, and you could hear it moving, which woke, woke the guy up. And he thought he'd want his uh, money back, but truth is that he's like, no, he loves it. <laughs> I thought you liked that uh, interesting little story. Quite fascinating, huh? So, guy loves the haunted house that he's living in. And yeah, scare some people. Some people think that's just really cool. Um, specifically, I wanted to keep things really simple because people do like things simple. I can't stand uh, books that are not incredibly pithy. One of the great things about Advaita Vedanta and uh, the Upanishads and uh, Plotinus especially, but even Syrianus and some others, is they're incredibly pithy. I hate wading through uh, books, and I can really fast scan books. Most people can't, though. To, you know, find one nugget of important information, like 50 pages, one nugget, another 50 pages, one nugget. So I like to keep that very simple in this video, too. Specifically, there are five modalities, attributional natures of true learning. So we have true learning, as a principle of which it has five attributes. Only five, and this is something that no school teaches, nobody in college teaches, and I've made many, many, many videos on the best books to read. I keep getting asked about that, but specifically on the attributional natures, uh, nature uh, relational to those books, there are five modalities, specifically attributes of true learning. They say modality, they say attributes, doesn't make any difference. Uh, of these five, number one, and there are no particular order. It depends on how someone lives their life. Someone might find a particular aspect way more important than another. But uh, so these are not in any order. Spontaneous thought synthesis or thought generation. Um, this is uh, problem solving, synthesis of thoughts. And there are certain books that are actually geared towards that. So spontaneous thought synthesis. I mentioned this many times. Like, one of the great things for little kids is that people buy expensive toys to have their kids to learn stuff. What you should do is you uh, usually find them in the, uh, in the waste bin of places that repair stuff, like computers or whatever the case might be, as long as it's not something dangerous with big capacitors in it or something. You know, give the kid a little screwdriver set. I've got one right here. I can't reach it. And to have them take stuff apart and learn you know, how it works. It uh, generates this three-dimensional thinking. Also, too, simple stuff like uh, Legos, and kids don't use Lincoln Logs anymore, but actually two-dimensional swiping and dragging on an iPad, it doesn't cut it. It just doesn't. There are interesting applications. I've seen them for learning on iPads and whatnot, but this is two-dimensional swipe and drag. It doesn't do it. You were talking, you were talking about needing to stack stuff you know, it's like, well, if I do this, then this will happen. If I do that, then it'll work, but it won't work like this because of the nature of the center of gravity. You know, so you can't do that on an iPad. And yet parents and whatnot are, you know, they're all together too happy. As well, he's got learning applications on his iPad. That doesn't cut it. So you need spontaneous thought, uh, genesis, and uh, intuition. Uh, and it's a, it is itself, of course, a type of problem solving. Number two, and I'm writing a booklet on this right now to be expanded on into a book, and that is uh, retroduction. Sherlock Holmes uh, used induction and deduction, but retroduction is working your way back. A very, very crude example of it would be like detectives that are doing crime solving. You know, they'll listen to perps. 
But they're not listening, at least the good detectives anyway. There are probably not many good detectives. Not listening so much to what the perp is saying, rather listening really closely to the stuff they're not saying or avoiding the saying. This is working back, yes? Uh, and this is, of course, not only useful for theurgy, it is useful for a very, very quick means of uh, problem solving about things that cannot be objectively known. Specifically, sub uh, subjective uh, subjects, um, whether that be uh, metaphysics, uh, philosophy, uh, things regarding uh, discernment of other people. I mean, if you could problem solve somebody el out, whether that be your boss or somebody you know, you're trying to figure out so that, you know, they don't do something good or bad, you know, any type of problem solving, you can actually get there really, really quick using the process of retroduction. And this is a completely lost art. I mean, just utterly and completely. There's only currently a couple books on it. Um, retroduction has two different modalities. One is directed at, at, uh, at uh, metaphysics, and the other one is directed at uh, problem solving. Number three, dialectic thought analysis, okay? Rhetoric, dialectic thought analysis. I mean, people need to be reading. A lot of the stuff attributed to Plato was not written by Plato. The really, really important stuff like the Parmenides, the Tamius, various aspects of Plato's Republic, all this stuff. That is Plato's works. Yeah, but it wasn't written by Plato. Tamius and Parmenides is a much older Greek. It is not original to Plato. We think Plato was super ancient. Um, but this stuff is even way older than Plato, but uh, dialectic thought analysis. And so there's some really, really great stuff uh, for that, like Proclus, Iamblichus. You, could, you don't need to learn Greek, which would be very helpful for you, but you could read translations of stuff uh, from the greatest uh, Greek translator who ever lived, was Thomas Taylor. Um, the, uh, these are available on various websites, too, for a free download pdfdrive.com being one of them, by the way. It's not my website, by the way. So dialectic. So, so far we have three different things. Uh, spontaneous uh, thought synthesis for problem solving and building and discernment, which you can't learn that from two-dimensional swiping on an iPad. Retroduction, dialectic. The last remaining two um, are very important. For the average individual, the very last one is the most important. But number four is theurgy. Theurgy is also, too, an aspect of uh, retroduction. This, of course, uh, gives one to follow natural order. Morality is not important. People that actually engage in trying to lead a moral life uh, embrace a false construct of a superficial facade of being a righteous person. As we all know, these people that are superficially moral and pious, but they're completely corrupt right underneath the surface. Genuine theurgy would help lead one, uh, help one lead the middle way of a, of a righteous life, wherein which if someone is worried about morality, and I could care less about morality because uh, true metaphysics is not immoral or moral, rather amoral. Um, this puts one in the position of following natural order and everything is an effulgent uh, manifestation naturally. In other words, one doesn't have to contrive this false uh, moral life. But theurgy is incredibly important to leading a wholesome, happy life. Because you could be the most beautiful person in the world and the richest person, but you know, your life is miserable because you're so caught up in the vain superficiality of objective falsehood because the world and the universe is holographic. So theurgy actually covers almost everything. But it helps one lead the, the, a life of natural order and of happiness. So whether you're dirt broke and ugly or you're filthy rich and beautiful, you know, these things are not bearings. Neither one of them is on leading a, uh, you know, a full, normal, content life. So theurgy is incredibly important. So that's number four. Number five is actually incredibly important just as far as most people I consider it to be the most important. That is discernment. And uh, this is primarily involving fallacies, being able to see the nonsense, the lies, the fact that everybody has an agenda. Well, 99.999% of everybody has an agenda. It's like, what's your angle? You know, you're not trying to actually help me. You're trying to find an angle on me. You know, an angle to work. Like every commercial is an angle. Um, it's, uh, why would you someone give you a free sample? Like evil people... Not that I've ever done this, 
people give you a free sample of something only so that you uh, love it and come back and have to, you know, pay for the rest of your life, uh, you know, to, to obtain more of it. You know, everybody's got an angle. So discernment, learning fallacies, incredibly, incredibly important. You know, straw man fallacy, um, bandwagon fallacies. There's all ad hominem. If there's fundamentally, like, I think 114 primary fallacies, and uh, if people can learn them all, life will be so much better for you. You're not taught this stuff in school and college unless you take a, a course in logic. And even then, they don't go that deeply into fallacies in the course in logic in, uh, in college. It's so incredibly important. It's like, what's this person's angle? It's like, we'll give you free six months insurance. It's like, yeah, well, there's an angle here. Let me find it. Okay, there it is. This is where they're trying to, uh, you know, trying to pull one over on me, pull the wool over my eyes. Fallacies and discernment and uh, so, so incredibly important. I actually scanned in, uh, it's called a great course on uh, fallacies and uh, logic. And it goes over all the fallacies and identifying them. When you have a conversation with anybody, you can see through their lies and nonsense. When you watch a commercial or you read about something like, oh, I'd really like to buy this, and they, you really, really quickly discern the stuff that they're not telling you about. And this is where retroduction and fallacies come into effect. You know, they're lying about this. It's kind of like where you get a free Lamborghini, but each tire costs $100,000, which, of course, is not an example that in the real world, it's like, wow, free Lamborghini. It's like, well, yeah, the gasoline's $50 a gallon, and each tire is uh, $80,000. For example, it's like, wow, yeah, but it's a free Lamborghini. Some people, their lives, everybody, this is not my opinion, it's a fact, everybody's lives would be so, so much easier and better when you can identify the lies and rubbish and fallacies that the world's trying to feed you and pull the wool over your eyes. Um, reading the works, and this is only a small composite of the stuff that I've talked about many countless videos on best books, uh, the Aeneas of Plotinus, uh, Julius Evola, now, you could ignore the politics of Evola, but like Ride the Tiger, Revolt Against the Modern World, um, uh, The Metaphysics of War, which is not really about war. Um, Evola is really great stuff. Someone uh, growing up and uh, playing chess so you can do problem solving. I'm not about playing games or wasting your life playing games. The one work I've recommended to everybody to read, regardless of age, will make you so much sharper. But it doesn't just make you sharper, it gives you an ability to think in a completely different manner, which is infinitely helpful. Infinitely helpful. And that is the Perifusion by John Scott, or John Scott of Regina. Perifusion, yeah? P-E-R-I-P-H-Y-S-E-O-N. Perifusion. John Scott, John Scott of Regina. Erugina, some people have called him. John Scott, right. Uh, the works of Iamblichus. The Writings of Syrianus, S-Y-R-I-A-N-U-S. The Works of Proclus. The two primary works of Advaita Vedanta, that being the Upadisa Sahasri and the Vivetsuda Mune. The Principal Upanishads. Pseudo Dionysius. Learning all the major fallacies like I've talked about. Um, here's a prime example, and there are many thousands of examples, but I'm just going to give you one. Yeah? There's the reason why all this great stuff was written in the, has been written throughout many, many, many centuries and uh, millennia since, uh, you know, 500, 800 BC. But I'm talking about like in the, the Dark Ages and also to the 16th, 1700s. The reason why this stuff is so complex, you could say, here, here's $100. I dare you to read four pages of this, even two. They can't do it. One example is Theoria Philosophiae Naturalis by Roger Boscovich, the best, most favorite book of Nikola Tesla. You can download the book on archive.org. I've talked about this before. Half the book is in Latin, and the English translation is on the other page. People can't read it. It's like they're re reading something written by an advanced alien race. They can't read it. So I have a college degree, and I even have a PhD. Good. Go read two pages of Theoria Philosophiae Naturalis. Don't have to read it in the Latin. Just read the English translation. I dare you. They can't do it. They can't even read a page of it, much less two pages. I have a PhD, but I can't read this stuff. There is a lost art of discernment and thinking and dialectic that people have completely lost. It's just gone. 
This is generation iPad and iMac. You swipe, swipe, mouse cursor, cursor, click, 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 click. It's gone. It doesn't have to be gone. It doesn't have to stay gone. The fact that people can't even read a page or two of this book, and there's one example among many, is proof. It's not my opinion or feeling or belief. It's a fact. So anyway, these five uh, modalities or attributes of true learning are, in no particular order, uh, spontaneous thought genesis. Also, too, um, like I said, yeah, Legos, like young kids. Uh, um, people don't use the uh, Lincoln Logs anymore, but uh, like taking broken junk, you know, slightly broken, still mostly intact. Giving some kid a screwdriver, make sure it's not dangerous uh, in parts inside of it. Taking it apart, learning how things work, this three-dimensional thinking. You can't get that from swiping on an iPad. So uh, spontaneous thought genesis or synthesis. Number two, retroduction. Number three, platonic. Doesn't matter if it's Aristotelian either, even though I'm no fan of Aristotle. Um, dialectic, yeah? Genuine platonic dialectic. Number four, theurgy. And number five is uh, discernment of fallacies. Or did you just say discernment? Fallacies are a major component of discernment. This is where you're sussing somebody out and figuring out very, very quickly why they're lying to you and what they're, what they're hiding. All of these things work in conjunction with one another, too, because uh, fallacies and discernment works in with retroduction. Dialectic and theurgy work together. Spontaneous thought genesis, three-dimensional thinking. They all work with the rest of these, too, but there's the five major modalities or attributes of genuine learning. Synthesis, retroduction, dialectic, theurgy, and discernment. Just those five. If human beings were taught those five growing up, you can even learn it later in life, okay? You say you're 30 or 40 years old, you can still learn it, you know? It's not like it's that old idea of like, oh, can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, you can. There's a little mosquito flying in here. Get away, mosquito. I'm going to edit that out of this video, me shushing away this mosquito. Um, you can learn it later in life. But with those five, you have a superior human being in every way. Their mind is like a steel trap. They can discern the lies and the fallacies. They understand and follow natural order, which makes them lead a more wholesome, happier life. Big time does. So that even if they're poor and destitute, they're still living a natural ordered life uh, where in which they don't uh, cleave to things. It's like, oh, my life would be so much better if I had this electronic toy. Oh, you know, my life is just miserable because I can't afford it. You know, that sort of ideology due to materialism. There's spiritual materialism, and of course there's physical materialism. It's all materialism, whether it be palpable or impalpable. So when one has the ears, you one leads a wholesome life following natural order. So with those five things, you have a superior human being that leads a happier life, a better life, a more wholesome life. That is undeniable. You could try to argue with me about it, but you'll be wrong, because I am right on this. Yep. So, let me know what you think. I read every comment. But uh, this video is 100% accurate and 200% undeniable. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions by description uh, for email. Contact info is in the description below this video. Any donations always warmly welcome. And Lux Everetas. Bye. Whoops! I dropped my mic. I'll edit that out too. Whoops! <laughs> Goodbye.